What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update as always, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, and we're also going to be talking about one trade that I made today, the 21st of December in 2018. But before we do get into the topics of today's video, for all you new viewers out there, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box, and let's get started with today's video. So yet again, guys, another red day today. In the stock market, we see the Dow Jones close the day down 414 points, down 1.8%. The S&P 500 guys closed 2% on the red down $50.84 and the Nasdaq composite guys down 4.2% down $268 on the day. So what a bloody day yet again with the Nasdaq completely blowing through the floor of one of these supports that we were talking about in yesterday's video and we'll get into that a little bit later when we do talk about the Nasdaq. But let's start today's video with the Dow Jones and let's just take a basic look at what is going on on this chart. So, you know, judging off of this 184 hour chart here, we can clearly see that there's a ton of panic in the market. And what I mean by this guys is that these candlesticks are showing us rapid selling, rapid, rapid selling. We notice we don't even see a green candlestick pretty much in the past I would say about seven, eight trading days, except for these two right here. On the 184 hour chart, guys, when we have a ton of red candlesticks in a row, you know, that's not showing. Uh, you know, pretty much that's not really a good sign that's showing uh, by these charts that we can see. And it's just showing us that there's aggressive, aggressive, aggressive selling overall in the stock market. And, uh, you know, not it's not looking good whatsoever. So judging off this 184 hour chart here, guys, the Dow Jones is at a support level here from a couple of, uh, I think it might have been like a year and a half ago. We'll get into the larger time frame charts to see that. But we're clearly in a falling knife formation and uh, there's just no support in sight on this 184 hour chart. And if we just judging off, if we're just judging off this three year, one week chart, you know, we clearly broke below this support level from this past February when we had another big sell off, you know, in terms of the Dow Jones, right? We talked about this in a couple of videos ago, but this past February, March in 2018, you know, we did peak at about 27,000 again, and we've reached that level this past October. And obviously, guys, we're down a good chunk from this peak at 27,000 this past October. We clearly blew through that support level, with the next one being at around $22,200. And these are the support levels that we drew in yesterday's video. I told you guys to draw these on your thing or swim platforms or whatever other platforms you guys uh, use because these are the you know these are the uh, the next support levels on these longer term charts that we want to focus on in terms of the Dow Jones so you know clearly we're at one here right now guys you know we're about a hundred two hundred dollars above it but we're still right around that support area and uh, the next one down here guys is at about twenty one thousand five hundred dollars and the way that the stock market has been acting recently the panic selling all of this uncertainty, you know, in the overall market itself, I don't think it's too far fetched at this point that we do break below this support and uh, test these highs that we saw, you know, about a year and a half, uh, you know, in 2017 of August, right at around twenty one thousand, you know, five hundred dollars. So we talked about how a bear market is when a stock, an index, an ETF gets to twenty percent. Uh, or above in terms of the fall from the peak. So the peak here is 27,000 and let's see how much we've fallen in terms of where we are right now. We can get a rough estimate of this by just putting our little uh, you know little pen here
here, pencil, and uh, just swing it up like that. And we can see we're down about 16.5% as of right now in terms of the Dow Jones. And if we break that support, guys, and get to about 21,600, that's going to put us right at the cusp right there. At a bear market, we're going to be, you know, peaking into a bear market at that point. And, uh, you know, again, I don't think it's too impossible that we do get to those levels with all the rapid selling, with the panic selling that we've been seeing over these past couple of weeks in the stock market. So the S&P 500, guys, again, this is one that we've talked about in every single video, and we do our analysis on this one in every single video. This one is down 2%, $50, and I made a prediction a couple days ago in that video titled the S&P going to 2450 that the S&P was going to get to 2450 which is pretty much this support level right here around 2430 2450 and that's where we are right now in terms of the S&P 500 so guys critical critical technical level right now in the S&P 500 right on this 180 simple moving average and at the support here at around 2420 so if we do break below these levels guys not a good technical sign whatsoever in the S&P. And we can see here a couple years ago in 2016, you know, when the S&P bounced at about 1810 on this three-year chart, you know, this 180 SMA acted as a support level here. So if we do break this, that is technically, you know, a break of pattern if we do uh, look at this three-year chart in that sense. And if we take a look back at this 20-year chart, I know this is a little bit of a bigger time frame, but... Let me clear these this drawing set very quickly and we can see, you know, if we break those levels guys, these levels at about $2400, that is a critical break of a trend stemming back from, you know, the recession that we had in 2008. So take a look at this. This trend line is a very strong support here, here, you know, here as well. So this break would be a break of trend in the S&P 500 and we're going to be getting into a bear market if that does happen and now the nasdaq guys this one is already in a bear market if we're using that 20% rule, meaning that if it falls 20% from the peak, that is a bear market for any index, ETF, or stock. And that's what we can see here in terms of the NASDAQ composite. So it hit about $6,000 flat today, guys. And just to show you what I'm talking about, we can see from about $6,000, that drop from 7700 is a 215 percent drop so as of today guys the 20th of december 21st of december the nasdaq composite is in a bear not the nasdaq composite the nasdaq is in a bear market so keep an eye on that guys you know apple has been doing absolutely terrible down about another six dollars this obviously has a big drag on every single index but you know these stocks today guys <clears throat> They got absolutely slaughtered. Again, some of, some of the ones in my portfolio got absolutely slaughtered. We can see Facebook here is down to $124 today, guys. Another 6% drop. You know, Apple down 3%, 4% nearly today. Down another $6 in the 150s, guys. I wasn't even expecting Apple to get this low because if we're judging on this one-year, one-day chart here, we can see roughly 160 was a solid technical support from about a couple of months back in the beginning of 2018. But the fact that we broke this uh, support for Apple, guys, we have to look at this three-year chart now to get supports from back in 2017. So we're even breaking below or right at the levels of 2017, you know, in September of 2017, when Apple was at about $150 per share. And literally after after that guys you know the next support is going to be at 140 and honestly you know I'm, I'm being a little bit patient with buying shares i'm going to wait and see what happens next week but if apple does get to these levels guys at about 140 dollars 
I'm probably going to go in with a very, very heavy position. I'm even considering it this upcoming week to add at least, like, I'm talking about at least, like, 10 more shares, 10, 15 more shares to my position. I know a lot of people out there might not think that's a lot, but, you know, this is one of my longer-term positions, one that I'm planning on adding money into, you know, every month at this point, every couple of months, whenever I do see a big opportunity. So, you know, I already picked up a couple of shares, I believe four or five shares at about 165. I have not bought in any more shares quite yet. And, you know, I'm just going to be waiting potentially to add about a $1,500 position, $2,000 extra into Apple this upcoming week. And if we get to the 140s, guys, I'm going to be adding, you know, another maybe $1,500 into Apple to get that position, you know, very strongly averaged in the 140, you know, high 140 range, maybe mid 150, low 150 range. You know, that's my goal and, uh, right now, as of right now for my Apple position and obviously Obviously, guys, if we get deeper and deeper into a bear market, we get into the 130s, you know, same rules apply. You know, I'm going to be adding even more shares to my Apple position because the one thing that's guaranteed in the stock market, guys, is that eventually this is proven historically that, you know, the stock market's going to go up in price. So, you know, these shares here, guys, buying them here, you know, we might get some more pain in 2019. Who knows? But, you know, if we do see a recession, whatever does happen, right, you know, every, if everything clears out out and you know by 2020 2021 these shares should be worth maybe even $300 350 I'm not really giving a price target out there because uh you know that's not what we're doing in this video but you know who knows if Apple shares are $300 in about five years you know you would have doubled your money in five years giving you about you know a 20% return per year which you know in most years pretty much every year that would beat the S&P 500 and uh, the whole entire idea is to beat out the indexes to or as it as you know uh as an individual investor, right? Your goal is when you're picking stocks is to beat the indexes because if you're not beating the indexes, you might as well just invest in the indexes, right? So that's my little rant there on Apple. I'm just planning on adding a ton of more shares now that we're getting into the 150s and potentially into the 140s next week, which again, I think is very possible because I do think there's more sell-offs to come uh, in the overall market. So let's talk about what I traded today, guys, very quickly before I do end this video. I don't want it to be too long, but I'm sure you can guess, guys, today I was able to catch TVIX, which is one of my favorite market ETFs that I've been trading over the past couple of weeks with all this volatility occurring. So this one obviously had a very good day because the S&P did very poorly. We popped up here, you know, that that brought open, uh, that opened up a dip buy for TVIX, you know, and once we started to sell off from 2,500 guys, that gave me the, you know, that, that opened up my radar, my eyes to TVIX and uh, I'll show you guys exactly where I ended up getting in. So let me show you guys here. I do believe I got in at around $76 and uh, 30 cents. Let me check my phone very quickly for you guys so I can see exactly what time I did get in because uh, as of right now, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I forget, but I ended up selling out at about 70 uh, seventy dollars and twenty cents. But I'm just logging in very quickly. Give me one second here, guys, and I'll tell you exactly, exactly where I ended up uh, doing all this. So, drop a comment down below. Let me know what have you guys been trading today. What has been going on in your trading life this this past week? So here we say I got in at about okay, sixty six fifty seven was my first buy at about. What was that? About 10.30, right? Right around here. Yeah, around 10.30. What was it? 66.57? Yeah. So right around here, I bought in uh, at first, right? At about 66. Uh, what did I say? 57. We ended up pushing up here. I didn't take my profits. We pulled down here and I added more money at, at this point right here to build a stronger position because we were holding this 180 SMA very nicely. Strong support there. Higher low from the previous. All signs pointing to an uptrend right here. So I ended up adding another position here and I sold off my shares actually at about 1230 uh, 12 30 49 p.m. to be exact with you guys and that was on this run up here right 
Yeah, it was on this run up here. I missed this sell point here. I didn't sell at the at the complete top, but we ended up pulling back here, and I probably sold off literally right here at about seventy dollars and twenty seven cents. So from seventy dollars and twenty seven cents, let's say my average cost was at about sixty six dollars. Let's say it was at about $66.40.50 roughly, right? Let's say $66.70 just to round up a little bit. $66.70 up to about $70.27. I made about... 5% today on my position. And that's a very solid day for me because my days, uh, my goals every day pretty much is to get three to 5%. Do I hit that every day? Sometimes I don't hit it. Sometimes I get 2%. Obviously, sometimes I take losses because trading, you do take losses. If someone tells you they don't take losses, they're lying to you. And, uh, you know, sometimes I get even more than that. And today, you know, I got at the, I got a 5% day, which is a very solid day for me trading in the stock market but you know guys a lot of selling pressure continues continues and I do think this is going to continue to happen and uh, just let me know what you guys think man drop a comment down below let me know what you think of the current state of the market do you think we're gonna come uh, you know come back up and maybe end off 2018 strong do you think we're gonna continue to sell off into 2019 and continue to sell off until the trade war is resolved right I personally think you know we're going to continue to sell off into 2000 2019 at this point guys the stock market in 2019 uh ended off in the negative well we haven't ended off yet but we're currently in the negative and i can show you that very quickly just basically on the s p 500 before i do end off this video but you know right now you know we are at 2408 and uh you know we started off the year uh at about you know, you can see it right here. We started off the year at about 2680. So on the year, guys, right now, I mean, we're not we're we're not doing too great, right? We're not doing too great at all. So from here up to where we started, guys, you know, this year has been a 10% loss of a year in the S&P 500. I'm sure the Dow is very similar, and the Nasdaq might even be more because this one has fallen the most out of every. Uh, actually, no, it might not be more. It's not more actually. Don't quote me on that. Uh, you know, uh, scratch that but you know nasdaq is down about six percent this year and uh, let's just see the dow for the heck of it at this point why not guys so you know let's see the dow so from where we are right now from the beginning of last year uh beginning of this year we've lost about nine percent so the dow down nine percent s p down nine percent and uh the nasdaq down about six percent so very bloody year this year i mean not very bloody but you know sell off sell off here and this could continue into 2019 but with all of this guys you know just remember the stock market always goes up over time this at the end of the day is just short-term news you know a lot of people get caught up in this they get scared but at the end of the day this is just short-term news dropping the price of a stock just think about it guys this whole Trump situation, you know, all of these tariffs, all of these uncertainties in the market, this is all short term thinking. We're thinking with, uh, you know, we're thinking in a span of, uh, you know, three months from now, right? But we have to see that vision of five, 10 years from now when hopefully this trade war stuff is behind us, where the markets are going to be. And, you know, in five, 10 years, I guarantee you, looking back at today, we're going to be like, dang it, I wish I loaded up on so and so stock. I wish I. I bought some, uh, you know, shares in this company. I wish I bought this ETF because at that point in time, you know, it could be, in my personal opinion, it will be way, way, way more than what it is right now in 2018. So drop a comment again down below. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this. What are you guys trading? How was your week? I would love to love to know. And uh, I'll interact with you guys as always. I always answer every single comment. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.